Welcome everybody to another edition of the Hurry Up. I'm your host Adam. Let's get into this. So I know I've been off hiatus. I, don't, I think the last video I made was week two, week three, maybe even week one. Who knows? Life gets in the way. So um, here's what's going on. You know, it's week 10 in the NFL. Can you believe that? 10 weeks are already gone by so quickly. Uh, it feels like yesterday it just started, but here we are. Um, and many things are going on. I know that the league is down this year in terms of teams that are good, but some of them are starting to make their headway. And, and at least in the NFC, you know, you got the the top divisional teams. You got Arizona. You got Philly, who just overtook the Commanders, by the way. Um, you have, uh, excuse me, uh, Atlanta, and then you have um, the the Detroit Lions. Those are your four top. Teams, And then you have, you know, the Commanders, the Vikings, you know, uh, a few other, a few of these other teams that are, that are waiting in the wings. Um, you know, I know that the uh, Green Bay Packers are in that, in that mix as well. So you've got four teams plus Green Bay and Minnesota and Detroit, not to mention the Commanders. I mean, there's a lot going on right now. It's going to be a fun last seven or eight games of the stretch to find out who. Detroit looks looks amazing. They look poised and ready to to, to finally get that elusive uh, appearance. I don't want to jinx them right now, but you never know what can happen. Um, it's been a long it's been a long season for a lot of teams, a lot of injuries. Um, so that is really what you're seeing right now. However, for the local teams in New York, it's been abysmal. Um, Aaron Rodgers, not the guy you thought he was. Don't know where the Jets are going to go after this. They'll probably win a couple more games um, just because they have too much talent not to, and they still play the Patriots, I think, again. So they'll probably get get that game in there and a couple other teams down the schedule. So they'll probably end up with four or five wins. However, the team in New York, the Giants, the big brothers of New York, who normally would be in the headlines right now, but thanks to the Jets and their Circus are kind of being pushed to the back burner, even though they got a lot going on. They just played one of the worst football games I've ever seen, um, and it's been bad. I mean, when you lose to the worst team in football, they, there's problems, and you lose in the way that you lost. I mean, sure, you had a furious comeback, and that's because the, the team that you were playing basically isn't good enough to overcome their mistakes, but somehow they overcame just enough to get the ball into the field goal and they have three wins and now you have two and it's really a sad state of affairs um daniel jones has been absolutely abysmal the last two games people go oh, look at him second half of games are not not what you always want first half you've got to build on something so that when you come out in the second half you're not reaching for points like they're doing what the giants are doing reaching for points every time in the second half they only score 15.4 points a game and last week they scored 17 It doesn't get any better than this, right? It's, it's worse. Brian Dable should be fired. I would have left his ass in Germany. Same with Joe Shane and J Daniel Jones. All three got to go. But if Mara's going to keep these guys, Jones has got to go. Now, people are saying Jones ain't, ain't the only problem, blah, blah, blah. He is the main problem. He is the catalyst to a lot of the problem. We saw this last year against the Raiders when he came in before he blew out his knee. The team wasn't happy. They had no juice. Then Tyrod Taylor comes in and they got juice. They, Tommy DeVito comes in, they got life. Not saying I necessarily agree that Drew Locke is going to win you games, but you got to know as a coach, you got to do something. You got to get rid of the guy and just say, sit down. You're costing us. Get, you mean, you can't miss two guys wide open on a flea flicker. The flea flicker attempt worked. But you didn't execute. And I wanted, I wanted to touch on something real quick, and I'm sure we'll touch on it more on the NFC's Real Deal Roundup tomorrow, Wednesday, 5.30 p.m., coming at you in your living rooms. But the play calling is blamed a lot when teams are bad, but the play calling is an extension of the quarterback on the field because we can blame everything you want on Brian Dable, but we've had a couple of good play callers come in here, Pat Shermer, the guy going offensive coach of the year in Minnesota. He's doing a decent job over in Colorado. He comes here, looks like he can't call a damn play for his life. I wonder why. Then you got Jason Garrett, who's calling plays all up and down the field and, and making moves happen with quarterbacks and things like that. He comes here, he doesn't, know how, he doesn't um, the game has passed him by, right? Then you got Brian Dable coming here, who had some, some, some adequate play calls across the league, but, you know, I had Josh Allen there, and, you know, 
all of a sudden he doesn't know ball anymore. Like, what is the common denominator of the three coaches I mentioned? They all had one guy under center. The same guy that can't read a defense pre or post snap. It hinders your offense when you do that. And the thing is you can't keep calling the same offense like they did in 2022 because people understand that that offense. They know what's you know there for them. They know how to defend it. Two red zone turnovers are unacceptable. You know, I mean, it's not like they, they were bad plays. You throw the oh, well, the receiver should go. Tyrone Tracy had the ball on his shoulder like this, and the guy behind him rips it away from him because the ball is giving him trouble. If it's put in front of him, he catches that ball, goes out of bounds. It's still a bad play, but they kick the field goal. The third and one, everyone's like, oh, that's a bad play call. If he dirts that ball, it's fourth and one. Or sails that ball over the receiver's head, it's at least fourth and one. You got another chance. You can't take a sack in that play. He took a sack. That was the worst thing that could happen. Against a pass rush that wasn't getting sacks at all, they got sacks. This team is bad. And they look even worse to the team in Carolina, in Germany. And and for me, I thought they were going to win. I thought this was going to be Daniel Jones, you know, playing against a shitty defense, doing what Daniel Jones does, hearing about how good he is. You can't even you can't even look at that performance and say it was good. So Giants are in an influx. What do they do with at the end of the year? Do they fire their coach? Do they keep their coach? Do they bring in a new coach? For those who want Bill Belichick, that you know that's a pipe dream to me. I don't necessarily want that guy here. I understand his accolades and what he's done. I don't think that's the guy. That a few years ago when they were looking at Pat Shermer and and things like that. Yes, I thought maybe that that would be the chance. Now he's out for a year, maybe he comes back. I mean, the Giants would do something like that. Nostalgia, I get it. I understand why people think that way. Just not, it's not for me. And I hope the Giants don't do it unless you have Bill come in, work with the GM that you got, because they're probably going to keep the GM, and bring in a solid guy to replace you. So if there's a succession plan on the coaching staff, whomever you decide that is. Right, build the team up, and then have success, success. Success there. This is a small industry. Thirty-two teams. There's thirty-two coaches across the league. Right. There's not many jobs opening everywhere. My guy that I would get if I'm the Giants is Mike Vrabel. He had success in Tennessee. He had a quarterback in Tennessee. He brought, those teams were number one in their conference when he was there. They had they fell in some hard times with injuries to that quarterback, and you know some some decisions amongst the ranks in terms of. The GMs changing and things like that, that that kind of hindered them. But if the Giants, whose trend has been since McAdoo, they went with Coughlin, who was a, not a first-time head coach. Well, let's go back to the Fossil era, right? Fossil was a first-time head coach. They went into they went back with experience with Tom Coughlin. They went with an inexperienced coach in McAdoo. They went back to a coach with experience in Pat Shermer. They've done now two young coaches in terms of judge, and Dable, so if they go back the trend and goes, listen, we want a little bit more stability in the coaching ranks while we work with this GM to allow for more professionalism and, and some growth, there's a guy there in Mike Brimble. I would I would love Brian Flores, but he burned he probably burned that bridge, so he's probably not coming in. So who knows what's gonna happen? As long as they bench Daniel Jones, I'm good with it. They need a new quarterback, they're gonna get a new quarterback. I don't care what anybody tells me, oh, these guys aren't as good as last year. No. Nobody has idea how good these quarterbacks will be until they step foot into the NFL. You can not like them, you could rank them high or low or whatever. The Derek Carr Derek Carr was a second round pick. If you were to redraft him now, he's going in the first round over EJ Manuel. If you told me the careers of those two guys, right? That's just gonna that's what's gonna happen. That's what they do. When you redraft quarterbacks, look at Lamar Jackson. If you were to redraft him now, he's probably going number one overall. If you were to tell me his projection, and probably Allen's probably going two and not seven. Just saying. That's the difference of it, of what you're thinking about. Pat, Pat Mahomes was number 12. Nobody knew how good he was going to be in the air raid system. Nobody. But you were to go back and redraft him, he's going number one overall. Deshaun Watson, prior to his allegations, he would have been drafted up higher. You know, that's what happens. Daniel Jones probably wouldn't have been drafted in the first round if you projected out his career. So you can't just say guys are going to be bad because you, you've watched something on TV. You cannot like a guy or 
think he doesn't fit. Look at guys who might fit the Giants' profile. Ward, Nussmeyer, Dart. Hell, maybe even Drew Sanders. I, you know, there's a there's guys in here, and I don't. I, I'm going to say this. I bet you Jalen Milrow goes number one overall because if they're comparing him to Lamar Jackson, Michael Vick, guys like that who can run. Once you start to get that hype about you, and then he blows up the combine with his speed and his throwing, and he blows up his pro days, is going to be these guys are going to rise up the boards, especially with QB needy teams that are going to be down in the top ten where the Giants probably and hopefully fingers crossed will be will be picking. And it'll be a new direction for whomever the coach is. And a new direction for this team that we haven't seen in six years. The Giants will have one quarterback on the roster. And that one quarterback we don't even think is going to be here. That's Daniel Jones. One. So we can blame the play calling. But if you look at it, you know, good quarterbacks overcome bad play calling. They do. Unless you're an egregious person like what happened in L.A. where, you know, you're too arrogant to run a regular run play. But you look at Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert now has a, co- a coach that is helping him, that, that is building a, a dominant team around him. Look how flourishing that guy is. Oh, by the way, all you people that don't like Justin Herbert, you may want to check the tape again because he's better than Daniel Jones. I'm sorry I had to get that one in there. I know there's a lot of controversy about that. A lot of people out there, they know who they are. But the point is, I'm not saying I want Dayball here. I think he should be fired at the end of the year. But if they do keep him around here, he'll get a chance to get his quarterback, and then we'll see what will happen going forward. The rumor is right now Daniel's going to be benched. Hopefully that happens, um, and we'll see where they go from there. Uh, This has been another edition of The Hurry Up. I'm your host, Adam. Let's go.